Hey everyone, and welcome to Upcycled Adulting, where I am here to help you overcome obstacles, grow to accomplish your goals, and create healthy habits. Today, we're going to be talking about healthy habits, and specifically, we're going to be talking about how to stay healthy with specific habits. Now, I have been hearing a lot from people who are working to accomplish their goals that they are really struggling to stay on track with their habits and their goal work because everybody in their house has been sick. And if you are a mom, you know how intensely overwhelming and how much work it can be and how distracting it can be to have a house full of of sick kids. It seems like one of them gets it, then everyone gets it. I have five kids. And so I will tell you that if I didn't figure out how to navigate this situation, we would be dealing with sickness in our house for literally months because by the time the seventh person got over it, the first person wasn't immune anymore and was getting it. It has been outrageous. And for that reason, I've created this list of 13 things to help keep your family healthy. And if somebody in your family is under the weather, how to keep the rest of you from getting it. Now, don't forget to subscribe because I am always here helping you manage your life, build the life of your dreams, and make it super, super easy with real life tips and tricks that are proven to be successful. So let's get started with this list because if y'all have somebody sick in your house, you do not have time to mess around with this. All right, number one is, of course, wash hands. Everybody needs to wash their hands. Every time anybody comes into the house, goes anywhere, handles garbage, handles food, goes to the bathroom, everybody needs to wash their hands. Now, one of the issues with washing hands is actually getting the kids to do it long enough or properly. It's important to know that the proper way to wash your hands is to get your hands damp, put the soap in your hands, lather it together, count to a hundred or sing your ABCs nice and slowly while you're washing and then rinse. A lot of times I know when my kids were little, they'd get them a little wet. They'd put a little soap on there. They just, you know, and think they were done. That's actually not enough. We need to make sure we're getting between the fingers and all of that good stuff. It's very helpful to give them something that is pretty simple to remember, like sing your ABCs when you wash your hands, and then you can rinse, um, rather than trying to get them to count or do a timer or something like that. And that'll ensure that they get into the habit. You can even make it really fun um, and just keep it light and silly. Um, in addition, make sure that you're keeping your hands off your face. You, everybody in your family, if we could break the habit of the hands on the face all the time, okay? Um, and even during cold and flu season, avoiding finger foods, that's really, really helpful. Number two is be careful where you set things. All right. I can't say this enough. Like we talk a lot about taking your shoes off and how important that is to keeping your house really hygienic, but where you set things matters a lot. And I see a number of people who are really diligent about taking their shoes off and making sure things are kept really tidy and really hygienic, putting their purses on their kitchen counters. Listen, y'all, purses are filthy. The bottom of your purse is filthy. Don't put that on the kitchen counter. So where we put things like purses and backpacks and things like that really matters. It's better to hang them on the back of a chair or to have a hook to hang them on, something like that. As soon as you take that backpack and you put it on the table when it was on the floor at school all day where people are walking, right, where they've been in and out of the restroom, now they're walking on the floor, y'all, just don't do it. Try to keep your purses, your backpacks, things that have been out of your house, off of your kitchen counters and off of your table. This is because whatever gets there is likely to get on your food and then you're going to actually consume it and you really don't want any of that. Number three is to disinfect high touch areas. Now, I see a lot of people doing a lot of disinfecting and I see a lot of people doing a lot of disinfecting of things that probably don't even need to be disinfected. So let me tell you what does. Doorknobs, light switches, handles, faucets, remote controls, phones. These are the things we don't think about, but we tend to share them and everyone is touching them, right? And that is a great way 
to spread germs. Now, I want to make sure everybody here remembers that when you disinfect anything, you need to be wearing gloves, okay? The reason you need to be wearing gloves is because disinfectant is really, really harmful to your microbiome. And next tip, number four, is heal your gut. You're not going to heal your gut if you're exposing your microbiome to disinfect it all the time. It's going to kill the healthy bacteria in there, and that's going to be problematic. Most of your immune system actually surrounds your gut. So when your microbiome is unhealthy, that creates a lot of issues for your immune system. You may need to consider doing things like talking to a gut specialist. There's a lot of coaches who work in this area, um, doing an elimination diet, taking a probiotic and eating plenty of prebiotic foods, which we're definitely going to get to so that you have a healthy microbiome and your immune system is well-regulated and healthy as well. Number five, do not share. Okay. Don't share. Do not share drinks. Do not share bags of chips. The hands in and out is a real problem. Do not share um, meals. Do not share. Okay. I know sharing is caring. Okay. But in this particular situation, sharing is not caring. All right. So we really want to avoid sharing. And by the way, anybody who's ever had a bout of something like head lice in your house, you know, we don't share brushes. We don't share hats. A lot of times we don't think about this inside our own family. I have to tell you this. Your other kids will not necessarily get it just because somebody in your house is sick. When we stop the sharing in our family, we had many, many years where we would have one, maybe two children who would catch something and it wouldn't go to the other kids because we realized that a lot of what was happening is that in the early stage of them having low level symptoms, right? They're sharing a bag of chips, they're licking the fingers, they're touching, and everybody is now getting it from that one bag of chips. I know y'all are like, I don't know if I want to hear this anymore, but it's true. And that was one of the things I didn't think of. I did think of like, you have sniffles, don't drink out of each other's cups, right? But I didn't think of things like shared food containers. Being really mindful of not having shared food containers can make a really big difference, especially if you have younger kids, um, because they tend to do the licking the fingers thing. Um, in addition, even if no one else in your house is sick, stop sharing. Please stop sharing because a lot of things are contagious before you're going to see symptoms, right? So if you just stop the sharing altogether, that will really help resolve this. Number six is change the linens in your house. Okay. I know this is being discussed all over social media right now. I keep seeing posts about how often do you wash your sheets? How often do you wash your kids' sheets? Washing sheets once a week is a really helpful thing to minimize the spread of illness. In addition, you want to wash all the hand towels in the house. The more frequently you can switch out hand towels, the better, because that's a great place for germs to build up and then pass from one person to the other. Even though we've got the kids washing their hands, even though they may be doing the ABC hand washing, there will always be those times that they are not as attentive to it. And then they don't thoroughly wash the hands. The germs are on the hand towel and now somebody else is picking them up from the towel. So we want to make sure that that's not happening. When I have someone in my house who is sick, they are in a room. There's a designated room for them. A lot of times they'd be in their own room, um, but when they were younger and they didn't have TVs or when they want to just be with mom because they're sick, right? Um, we would have them in the living room with me so that I could take care of them. And then the rest of the family would generally hang out elsewhere. Uh, and what we would do there is make sure that we covered, okay? I make them a little bed on the couch, cover it with sheets, get rid of the throw pillows, y'all. Okay. Because when they're no longer camped out there, you want to make sure that you strip that and wash it. Washing upholstery is a giant pain. And the last thing you want is a sick child laying on the couch. And then the next day, a healthy child laying in the same spot, 
picking up those germs. So you want to make sure that you cover your furniture with something that is easily washable. Just make it super, super easy. On this note, if you happen to have a kid with a stomach bug going on, one of the things that can be really, really helpful, or if you have young kids or kids who tend to struggle with bedwetting, is to use the lasagna technique where you do a mattress pad, um, bottom sheet, bedding, mattress pad, bottom sheet, right? That way, when in the middle of the night, if somebody's sick, you can just pull off that top sheet and um, the mattress or that bottom sheet and the mattress pad. So it's mattress pad, bottom sheet, mattress pad, bottom sheet, right? Keep going so you can't fit them anymore. You want at least two layers if you have somebody sick in your house. It will be a game changer if you have to wake up in the middle of the night and deal with that um, because you can easily get everything in the wash and you don't have to remake a bed. Um, number seven is humidify. All right. This is going to sound really wild, but they have done a lot of studies that if you have humidifiers in your house, that humidifiers not only give you the moisture you need, which we're going to talk about in a moment, but they also have been shown to impact flu virus in particular. And so there's a lot of studies that say that having a humidifier drastically reduces your chances of contract contrasting the flu. So get a humidifier and run it. Um, it can be helpful to have a whole house humidifier, but in the winter time, you may also want to have individual bedroom humidifiers in particular. Part of why we get sick so much during cold and flu season, meaning in the winter, is because we're running heat in the house. That dry air doesn't just make your hands dry and make you need chapstick. It dries out your mucous membranes and makes you susceptible to viruses and bacteria. So usually when you breathe in viruses and bacteria, they get stuck and they don't actually permeate your body. But in the winter months, when we're running our heaters, we have cracks, microscopic cracks, and the viruses and germs can weasel their way in there and get us sick. So the more moisture we can keep in the air so that we keep those mucous membranes nice and healthy, the better. And that leads me to number eight, which is get yourself outside. If the weather is not dangerous, go outside. It's vitally important to spend time outside. The cold will not make you sick, okay? I've talked to several doctors about this. I've looked it up. Y'all Google it if you don't believe me. That is an old wives' tale. The outside cold air is not going to make you sick. It will not. So go outside. Part of the reason is there's more natural humidity in the air, but the other reason is how important sunlight is to our health and our immune health. In addition, it can be really helpful to do things like have a full spectrum light in your home or even supplement vitamin D. So many people are unaware of the connection of vitamin D to our immune health. It's really important. A lot of times people think, oh, if you have vitamin C or sometimes people think vitamin C and zinc is all you need. Vitamin D is essential to immune health. So getting outside helps, having a full spectrum light helps and supplementing vitamin D can help. Now, vitamin D is a vitamin you can take too much of, so it can be really helpful to get a vitamin D level check from your doctor. Most insurance companies in the U.S. will pay for that to be included in your routine blood count screening when you go for your routine physical. All you have to do is ask because a lot of doctors don't do it. Just say, hey, can you run a vitamin test too. And usually they can use the same blood. They can do the same thing, send it to the same lab. Insurance pays for it just the same, all of that. But then, you know, if you need to supplement vitamin D because you'll get the report back as to how low your vitamin D level may be. If you're still not sure and you want to do a lot of due diligence here, you can check with a functional medicine doctor. Um, and a lot of times nurse practitioners are really helpful in this area as well. All right. So number nine, I'm like, where am I? Number nine is body brushing. So many of you have never heard of this practice, but body brushing is really helpful for your circulatory system and your immune system. It has this nice little side effect of minimizing the appearance of cellulite as well. Um, and it keeps your skin really healthy. So it has all kinds of aesthetic payoff 
and all kinds of immune and circulatory payoff. Basically, what you do is you grab a brush. You can buy them on Amazon, y'all. All you have to do is type in body brush. You'll find them, okay? And you just brush your skin dry toward your heart, all right? This helps all of the lymph in your body move. In addition, it aids in circulation and helps prevent things like spider veins and varicose veins by returning the blood flow toward your heart too. So your heart pumps blood and pumps everything away from it, but getting it all back to your heart and working against gravity, especially on your legs can be really challenging. So body brushing every day can really help. It's best to do this in the morning because it's very invigorating. And because of the way it affects your cardiovascular system, it's likely to like wake you up a little bit. If you do this at night, it actually can interfere with you falling asleep. No, I'm not even kidding. It's really, really simple. Um, you can do it as easy as you want or as complex as you want. There's all kinds of different methods, um, but I would start out really small and I would start out with the easiest method possible. Just do it in the morning after you brush your teeth and you're good to go. Um, number 10 is to avoid substances, y'all. I was a smoker for years. I know how hard this is, um, but it's really, really important to avoid sugar, um, alcohol, and cigarettes, especially if you are already sick. But those things are all detrimental to our immune system. So if you can avoid them or minimize them in your everyday life, that's really helpful. I know that there's a lot of wine mom culture going on. I got it. I know. I understand. But if you don't want to get sick every time your kids get sick, it's time to really minimize the alcohol consumption because it is so hard on your immune system. It causes inflammation in your body um, and it's highly problematic. So keep yourself healthy by avoiding substances that are harmful or damaging or impactful to your immune system. So again, sugar, alcohol, cigarettes, and obviously all, by the way, all recreational drugs. And, and this includes, no matter if it's legal or not, marijuana, um, and all illegal substances. This is a really serious issue when you're trying to heal from something or you're trying to avoid getting sick. Um, number 11 is eat healthy. As much as you can eat plants, lots of plants, good variety of plants, all right? And eat healthy, avoid processed foods as much as you can. Again, a lot of them contain highly inflammatory substances, but in addition to that, not having the nutrients you need in your body, again, makes you more susceptible to getting sick. So eat as healthy as you can. Um, I know with the kids, this can be really challenging. So my big thing that I like to do to get the kids to broaden whatever they're eating is smoothies. If you throw a banana in the smoothie, no matter what else you put in it, it will be sweet and yummy. It might not be a pretty color though. So you know, maybe throw some blackberries in there or something like that to give it a little nice color. But you can put kale in there. You can put literally anything in there with a banana and salad. The only thing that I've ever tried to put in a smoothie that a banana didn't um, didn't neutralize is spirulina. So I'm just giving you that. If you are adding spirulina into your life, do it a little bit at a time because it is an acquired taste. Um, number twelve is sleep. Please get your appropriate amount of sleep. We are so fixated on being productive that we are not resting our bodies the way we need to. And when we don't sleep, we are extremely susceptible to illness. In addition, they've recently connected um, sleep deprivation, meaning getting less than your optimal amount of sleep. So just so we're clear, sleep deprivation doesn't mean three hours of sleep. If you need nine hours and you're consistently getting seven, that is sleep deprivation. They've recently connected it to almost every chronic illness you can think of. Um, everything from autoimmune conditions, diabetes, heart disease, cancer. It is very impactful to your immune system to not sleep. Please get the sleep that you need. Um, please prioritize it. You do not need to be that productive. Sleep is not an actual luxury. Sleep is a necessity. It's a necessity just like food is. I know some people have more access to sleep. Some people also have more access to food. I'm saying that a lot of us have a lot of, we do have access to sleep, 
not necessarily a lot, but we have access to sleep, but instead we're filling our days with things that are productive. Your house doesn't need to be that clean. You do not need to hustle harder. You do not. Okay. You need to sleep. Sleep is absolutely essential. You will shorten your life by a long shot if you're not sleeping. And number 13 is of course, hydrate, 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 hydrate. If, if you are sick, if somebody in your home is sick, if you are not sick, hydrate. And anytime that you're exposed to illness, anytime that you yourself are coming down with something, focus on hydration. If you're struggling to eat, if you're struggling to get good rest, make sure that you're focusing on hydration. It's really beneficial to your body to hydrate, kind of flushes things out a little bit. Um, and a lot of our illness symptoms are actually highly connected to dehydration. The number one symptom of dehydration is fatigue not thirst y'all fatigue so that gives you a really good idea as to how these things connect because generally speaking when you're sick the very first experience you have is fatigue so we want to make sure that we're hydrating really well i cannot tell you enough how important it is to stay home to rest and to hydrate when you're ill all right please do those things it is not that important that you attend things it is very important that you rest and hydrate and stay home as much as you possibly can. I think that we've all learned that in the past few years, that it's so important to prioritize caring for yourself when you're sick. And for that reason, I often discourage people from using a lot of over-the-counter treatments because a lot of times those just mask your symptoms and you end up doing more than you really should. I know that if I'm not feeling well and I'm exhausted and I rest, instead of taking something and then going about my day, I will recover faster. And when I recover faster, I'm less likely to pass it on because I'm not symptomatic or I'm not sick anymore. And that makes a huge difference. In addition, never think Please do not think that um, it's a good idea to diagnose yourself, all right? See a doctor, go to urgent care, and get the treatment you need. If you're wondering, should I see a doctor? Should I go to urgent care? Should I go to the emergency room? The answer I'm just going to give you is yes, go. It's always better to be safe than sorry. It really is. Um, and it's important to know that common illnesses like the flu or a cold or can be really detrimental if you have other conditions that you may not even know about. In addition, some of these things are always potentially dangerous. The flu, for example, is has been globally dangerous for hundreds of years. Um, things like strep throat, which is relatively common, can be very dangerous. And I know recently, I'm in Michigan, we've had some really bad outbreaks of RSV in Michigan. Do not ignore um, more significant symptoms go see your doctor if you're not sure what's wrong go see your doctor and if you are prescribed antibiotics take them all i cannot emphasize that enough take them all if you're prescribed antibiotics i have a child who actually was exposed to strep throat and in less than 12 hours had scarlet fever because they were exposed to an extreme strep strain from a child at school who had had strep four times and never finished their antibiotics. Um, and because of this, they had actually created a super bug and were spreading it at school. Please take all of your antibiotics. It is not optional. I understand that you may feel a way about that. Talk to your doctor and be honest with them if you're not comfortable with antibiotics, but do not start taking them and then stop. Antibiotics are important and life-saving and it's important to use them properly. All right, so if you have any other suggestions for how to stay healthy or things that maybe you do in your home that I haven't mentioned here, tell me in the comments. Tell me if any of these are really new to you or something that you're excited to try um, or if you have tried them and they've worked for you because I know some of them sound a little off the beaten path, but I promise you these things work. And as a mama five, I have to say, figuring out how to keep everybody in my house from being sick for five months every year was a real feat, especially since I have special needs kids who aren't necessarily going to do all these things, right? So these are just some ideas. And the more of these you can hit, 
the less likely um, you are to get sick or have something spread, the more likely you are to be as healthy as possible through, um, through these colds and flu months. All right, so don't forget to subscribe. I am always here to help you navigate your life stuff, to give you easy tips and hacks, and to help you build the life you've been dreaming of because y'all, you are amazing and you deserve to live that life. Bye everyone.